Now, is this con consistent with group B? Well, how many adjacent hydrogens should there be for group B? Two, four. No, I'm sorry, three. Four? When we're looking at group B, how many hydrogens are there adjacent to group B? Just based on this information. Based on this information, how many hydrogens should be a great adjacent to group B? That should be a straightforward question. Based on the splitting. Three? It looks like we should review the splitting. What does this n equals four tell us? What's the meaning of sorry, four? Yeah, isn't that what n tells you? N tells you the number of adjacent hydrogens. That was the purpose. That, I think, is that. So I was saying that uh, I can understand why this would be a, a difficult problem for you. But once we understand the problem-solving techniques, this should be uh, actually a relatively easy problem. And the thing that you weren't that we weren't using was the ends. Mm -hmm. You were writing down the ends, but I don't think you were actually using those to solve the problem. The ends tell us the number of adjacent hydrogens. The ends tell us the number of adjacent hydrogens. So how many hydrogens should be adjacent to group B? How many hydrogens should be adjacent to group B? based on this information. Based on this information, how many hydrogens should be adjacent to the group B hydrogens? I'm just wondering why you have a triplet n equals two and then you have a quint. Oh, let's see, I was thinking four. This is, I had it wrong. In my oh, I see what's yes. going on. Okay. I just had Did that. you think it was a quartet? Yep. Oh, okay. That's why. No, so you actually wrote it out as a quintet. Yeah. This that's why I was having problems. Oh, okay. Yes. Q stands for quartet. Yes. So then Quinn stands for quintet. Here they actually wrote the whole thing out. Right. By the way, actually, I, I'm glad that, that that came up. That's actually a very important problem-solving technique here. Let, let, let's take a detour and talk about this important problem-solving technique. I'm going to say something here that seems very trivial, but that, that could be very important. Part of solving these problems is to transfer the information to your piece of paper. Then this is how we transfer the information to our piece of paper, right? So what should you do first with this problem? You transfer the information to your paper, and I, I think you're already using good notation for that. But what should you do after you transfer the information to your piece of paper? This is a very important moment in your academic careers. Double what check. do you, you double check it? It's amazing how often students just hope for the best after they transfer information to their piece of paper. So this seems very trivial, but it can make a huge impact on solving problems. After you transfer information from one piece of paper to another piece of paper, the next thing you have to do is check that you transferred it correctly every time because certainly my experience is I almost always make some careless mistake when I transfer information from one place to the other and the only way I'm going to catch that is by checking it. I know it seems very trivial to say that, but if people could just get into the habit of actually double checking their transfers, they could avoid a lot of wasted time. You can imagine how much time you might have wasted on this if this was a homework problem. So it's always important to double check your transfers. Okay. So, uh, so here we have this quintet. That's why I wrote down n equals four here. I was wondering why. Yeah. I was looking, okay. I was looking at yours and I was right. looking at mine. Okay. Oh, so that's where we got the n equals four. So watch out for the cues because they you have to be a little bit careful with that. And uh, now we expect four adjacent hydrogens, right? Mm -hmm. Well, does that match our picture over here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because group A has the four hydrogens. It's true that there's two on the left and two on the right, but we discussed yesterday that still adds up to four overall because they're all in the same group. So this really would, we really would expect this to be a quintet over here. And um, are, are we getting the right region over here? Well, 2.36 is in this region, which is what we would expect if we're not attached to an electronegative element, but we're adjacent to the element with the electronegative element. But that's exactly the situation that group B is in. So this, everything seems to match up with the information. Let's just confirm this a little bit more on our chart. Based on our chart, where would we expect group A to absorb? Where would group A absorb on the chart? No, it doesn't really. Do you agree that this would be group A? Oh, okay, yeah, yes. What you should be looking for is the bromine. Mm -hmm. So that would be where? Here. 3.4 to 3.6. And I think that is exactly where our group A was, 3.5. And I don't think that they told us anything about when you're adjacent to a bromine. However, we already knew from our rule of thumb that we would tend to expect to be in this region. Correct. And that's where we are. Right, does that make sense? 